Hello guys, welcome back to another video. So I'm in my BMW 7 Series today and today I'm going to be showing you how you can access the coolant temperature. So any modern, pretty much any modern BMW today does not have a coolant temperature gauge like you did way back in the day on the BMW E46 and E39 and so on. Now this is pretty annoying because it's a good idea to, you know, periodically check to see what your coolant temperatures are reaching. You know, if it's too low, then that could be an indicator that you have a faulty thermostat and it's not opening um, to allow your engine to get up to proper temperature. Or if it's too high, the coolant temperature, then that could be an indicator that you have some overheating issues. So in my opinion, it's a good idea to periodically check what your coolant temperatures are. Um, you know, like I said, if it's on the low side and your thermostat is not working, your engine is not going to be working efficiently. So essentially you're gonna be using more fuel. So you really want it to be working at the optimal operating temperature, to be honest. Now, the processes, they are a little bit different from model to model. Uh, in this video, obviously, I'm gonna be showing you how to do it on the BMW E65 and E66 7 Series. You do have to go through a few little menus, but without further ado, let's show you how to do that right now. So then, first thing is first, you do wanna put the key in the ignition. Turn the ignition on, so foot off the brake, you don't want to start the vehicle. Just turn the ignition on so that we have the lights. And then you want to let the service reminder just clear. And then what you want to do is hold down the trip odometer button here. This thing in the top left, you just want to hold that down. It's around 15 to 20 seconds in total. But you'll hold it down for around 10 seconds, you'll be greeted with the service reminders. You want to continue holding it until you are greeted with this menu and then if you tap this one click at a time you will be able to scroll down this menu so what we want to get to is eventually number seven which is the sensor values but those will be locked off to begin with so we need to scroll down until we get to unlocking and then what you want to do is hold this down for a further couple of seconds. And once you've gone into unlocking, you should see on the other side, we have lock on. Now we need to remove the lock because that's what is stopping us from seeing all of the uh, sensor values. So to remove this lock, to switch it off, you need to scroll down to the code. So if we click this once, and then what you need to do is keep clicking this until we reach our code number. Now, what is your code number? It is gonna be the last five digits on your VIN, which is your vehicle identification number. So you need to find out your VIN, and then you just need to add up the last five digits. Mine is 24, so I'm gonna reach the code of 24. So you just keep clicking it until you reach your added up number. And there we are then, code 24. I'm now going to hold this down for a couple of seconds. And there you go, the code should now have unlocked. So if we now scroll back to number seven, the sensor values, and hold this button down for a couple of seconds. And then on this side, we can see we now have our temperatures. So we have, first of all, coolant temperature, which is at the top. We then have engine speed, outside temperature, AC, D, dimming, I've no idea what that is, and photo, tra I've, no, I've no idea what that is either, but the main thing that we want to view here is the coolant temperature, which as you can see is at the top, and it's at eight degrees Celsius. Now if we go ahead and fire the engine up, so foot on the brake of course, this coolant temperature should begin to rise. As you can see, nine degrees. Ten degrees, and so on. 
Now, while I'm here, I may as well show you a couple of other cool features you can view in this menu. So to back out of the uh, sensor values, you just need to hold this down. And there we go. And now we can scroll through anything else that we want to uh, go to. So you can see, uh, you can change the acoustic. So when you uh, lock the car with the key fob, you can put the acoustic on. Personally, I find that quite annoying, so I tend not to have it on. Um, but yeah, we have fault memory. I'm not too sure what that will show you. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna be as good as something as Ista, but you can go into that if you so wish. Um, identification, that's actually where you can find your your VIN number, or your VIN, should I say. Um, so if you hold this down, as you can see, and then if we scroll down, we can see VIN. So my last five digits are 78090, which equals 24. So there we go, that's how I reached that number of 24. And we can also see production date and all the rest of it as well. So it's pretty, pretty uh, cool to see all this information if you need to see it. But again, we'll back out of this. We can also do a system test as well, which is where we can check to see that all of the lights are working as they should. So to activate that, just hold it down for a couple of seconds. And there we go. It's doing the gauge sweeps and testing the entire cluster display. Make sure all, all of the lights are working. Yeah, appears so. Frankfurter Street, yeah, that's exactly where we are. And I believe to stop it, we just have to press this once. Or hold it. Yeah, we have to hold that down to stop it. Uh, we can also see the consumption. I guess that's fuel consumption. Yeah, obviously we're not moving at the moment, so we can't really see that. Um, but we can also see our range, how many miles we have left in the tank. And then actually how much fuel we have in the tank in terms of litres, which is pretty cool to see. And then we can also see other things like voltage as well. But that's pretty much it. That's just a few little cool features on the BMW 7 Series. Okay then guys, so there we go. That's a nice little simple trick to do on the BMW 7 Series. Like I said, it's pretty much the same process on any modern BMW. I will leave you a link down below in the description box below where I've done it on my BMW E60, and that's pretty much the same process of many other BMWs as well. So if you find that this process in this video was you know, different to yours, and there's a good chance that that will be able to help you out. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you have found it insightful. Please remember to give this video a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you have not already done so, and I will see you all in that next one. Peace.